All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here, and today you're probably wondering what's going on here. Um, we've actually, we're using invisible weights. This is 405. That's my version of fake weight. I just pretend it's on there. So this is a concept I wanted to talk to you about. It's called reverse banding. So you use bands, obviously, and I started using these, uh, using this concept about 10 years ago. And I remember uh, I was training at Elite FTS with Dave Tate. Of course, Dave and I, particularly Dave, has a, Dave's a champion powerlifter. And when he trained over Louis at Westside, they used a lot of reverse banding to help him with lockout strength and other things. And I thought this was actually a great tool for bodybuilders, too, for a couple different reasons. And I remember people kind of snickering at first, like, oh, the bands are just making it easy. But there actually is some very good reasons to do some reverse banding in your workouts. I'm not saying do everything like this. There's a couple exercises I really like. So a couple things. So when you get a little bit older, uh, you find that there's particular exercises and particular ranges of motion within those exercises that can be dangerous. For example, a bench press coming out of the bottom with a real heavy weight is a high risk versus reward exercise. I've seen a lot of pec tears over the years and I will tell you the lower part of a bench press is a little bit dangerous, especially as you get older. The same thing with a squat. The deep part of a squat um, is, it can be, can be dangerous. It can be hard on your lower back. It can create some issues. So when you reverse band, what happens is the band, as it's stretched, it actually helps pull the weight up out of the bottom. So let's say you're doing a bench press. And as the band stretches, it helps you get the weight out of the bottom. And then the band loosens up. So you, you have to take the full brunt of the weight. So it helps you a little bit out of the risky part of the exercise. So think about how you can apply this. Now, what I used to do was I did it on leg presses and hack squats. So I wanted to go really deep on hack squats. I'm a big believer in deep hack squats. So if we reverse banded a hack squat, it would help pull you out of the bottom for about, you know, maybe six inches. And then the tension slacks on the band, and you, then you've got to move the weight yourself. So it's a way to train a little more safely for those of you who are um, a little more beat up or you don't want to get beat up. It also allows you to get a fuller range of motion safer. Now, that's one reason. The other reason, which I think is pretty cool, is if you think about, say, a bench press or a squat, there's a part of the range of motion where you're just not as strong. Take a squat, for example. When you get down to the bottom of a squat, let's say you can squat 300 pounds. You can get 300 out of the bottom, but then once you kind of get out of that sticking point, how much could you squat from a half squat or a quarter squat? You might be able to do 350. You might be able to do a 400 pound quarter squat. Lord knows we see people doing heavy quarter squats all the time. So what if there was a way to allow you to do 300 out of the bottom, but actually make the load heavier as you get closer to the top? So your tension is maximized throughout the full range of motion instead of just do one part of the range of motion. So let's take that example for, of squats again. Let's say you put, let's say you can squat 300. Well, let's say you put 380 on the bar. You get down to the bottom and the bands are stretched and they're helping pull the weight up from the bottom. So you may only be doing 300 out of the bottom, but once you start coming up, the band tension slacks and now you've got to push the weight yourself. So you might be doing 300 out of the bottom and then 340 and then 360 and then maybe the last part of squats 380. So same thing on a bench press. I used to love do doing these on incline bench presses. You know how I love that slight inc incline angle bench press? I used to love doing reverse bands on that. You know, back when I could do maybe 315 for, you know, say eight reps, I'd put 365 on there because I knew I could get 315 for eight. But then once I got past the sticking point, the bands didn't help me. So then I had to lock out 365 or whatever, however much weight I was using. So it allowed me to overload my triceps, and that's actually what uh, Westside, the folks over there were doing. They were overloading um, when, through a position that they were stronger in, so a lockout. So, so it allows you, to, allows you to train more safely. I like the fact that you can use a, more of a range of motion personally, um, and it allows you to kind of overload where you're stronger and allows you to still use the maximum weight where you're kind of in a weaker range of motion. So I want to show you just two things today on reverse bands. First, we're gonna start with a bench press. I like a slight incline myself, but I just wanna show you the concept. So you can see I got two bands here. These are Elite FTS bands, these are orange bands. Um, I'm actually making a cardinal sin here. I've got an older band and a newer band. You'll never want that. You either want two old ones or two new ones. 
because they get more slack as they get older. But anyways, conceptually, I think you'll understand. So we just put a bar in here. So Brett and I have put a bar in here inside the band. I don't know how much tension that is, but you know, it's probably around 45 pounds, right? It's holding up 45 pounds at the bottom. So once you set the bar up like this, well, first of all, before we even get to that, look at how the band is set up. The way you're gonna to wanna to do this is in, a, is in a, a cage like this. Because what you want to ha have happen is look at this line straight up and down right here. So when you're benching, you want the bar to come straight down and up with the band. So in other words, if the band was clear back here, the band might pull the bar back as you're benching. You want it to be in your natural range of motion. So whatever, however you push up, you want the band to align with that. That's why we have the band out here. Now, if we put it out here, think of what would happen. We'd start to come up and the bar would actually go out in front of us and we'd probably hurt our front delt. We'd probably hurt our shoulder. So you want it to be lined up just perfect. And we already practiced this, so we know that this is perfect for us. So you get the way that you get the bar set up like this. Now <clears throat> you can start to add some weight on here. So we go ahead and we put, put the bar in and we hold the bar down. I got it. And now Brett puts it on there. So, and now you just work your way up. So watch the angle here. We got a good angle. Okay. So straight up and down. So it's helping me out of the bottom. Right here, I can feel it pulling up. And then once it gets to about right here, I'm on my own. So you can just keep building your weight up. And if you bench, say, 300 for six, you'll probably be able to put 330 for six, 350 for six, something like that. It'll really help strengthen your lockout. Um, and again, if you have shoulder problems, this is the godsend if you have shoulder problems. It helps you out of the bottom where you would normally hurt your shoulder. Now, you can use different kinds of bands. These are the orange bands at Elite. Uh, are these called the light bands or average bands? These are either the light or average bands. Then the gray ones are the next ones up. You can use thicker bands or you can use smaller bands. It's, I like the orange bands myself, but you can play around with it depending on how much help you want. Um, now a squat would be the same concept. So we would have the hooks up here and we would step back and we would make sure we had the band set up so that our squat path was right in line with the bands. So if we had the band up here and we squatted, it would pull us forward. If we had it back here, it would pull us backward. So lining up the band with the angle you're pressing or squatting is essential, okay? Now, there's a lot of exercises you can do reverse banding with. You can use them with hack squats, you can use them with leg presses, we use them on pendulum squats, you can use them with uh, JM presses in the Smith machine. There's a ton of exercises you can use, that, use this technique on, um, but I think it's a great technique. I typically like to use it in phase two of my workouts when I'm doing the explosive stuff. Um, so it's usually my second exercise if I'm going to use them. Um, I don't think you need to get too crazy and do this on every exercise, but I do think it's a great tool. I think you'll really enjoy it. I can't tell you how many people I see now hack squatting with reverse bands. I don't even think they know even why they're doing it. Um, but we started doing those about 10 years ago. Now I see everybody on Instagram doing them. Um, but there is a good reason to reverse band. It's not just to use a lot of weight and look impressive. Um, there, there is actually some really good reasons. I don't think it's necessarily for beginners or intermediate, so I would save this for advanced folks. So if you're an intermediate, maybe tinker with it. If you're a beginner, I'd probably, I'd probably just shelve this and wait till you get, you know, learn more of your basic form and build your average strength up. And if you're advanced, this is a great technique for you if you're advanced. So short video today. I hope you find that interesting. This is a very useful technique I've used over the years. Uh, we appreciate your support, and we'll see you next time.